St. Joseph for our Mass for Holy Thursday. Our presider tonight is Father Joseph Tran, assisted by Deacon Denny Langdon. And please stand and join us in singing our opening song, Glory in the Cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. Thank you so much for joining us on this Mass of the Lord's Supper as we enter into the Paschal Tridium, the sacred three days as we prepare for the glorious Easter Sunday. As we gather, let's take a moment to prepare ourselves for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to an everlasting life.
just before I uh, begin the collect, I would like to remind every one of us that this is the day we commemorate the two sacraments that Jesus instituted, the sacrament of the Eucharist and the sacrament of Holy Order. So as you are here already, keep in mind um, some other intention, for example, for the priests um, who are serving the church um, right after um, the Easter Sunday, uh, there will be announcement of uh, priests who will be retired, priests will be transferred, and so on. So I ask you to keep all the priests who are serving the Archdiocese especially in your prayer at this Mass uh, for retired priests that they would um, take this transition smoothly, for priests who have to uh, uh, transfer that they would accept God's will, and for all the priests who are serving that they are uh, faithful in their service, and also priests who are deceased, that uh, they may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven as we uh, celebrate the anniversary of the Holy Priesthood and Holy Eucharist today. So let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant we pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations 
shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of the Lord. How can I make a return to A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. He rose from supper and took off his other outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the, the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered him and said, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need, to ex no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew the one who, who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, he put his garments back on and reclined at table again. He said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As human beings, we have a tendency to mark time, don't we? We usually say, well, I'm in the springtime of my life. <laughs> or as probably some of us, I may be in the winter of my life. <laughs> it's a way we mark time, and so does the church. She has seasons of the year in which we are to reflect more deeply upon not only scripture, but even our own lives. Uh, this evening, um, we mark the end of our Lenten journey, but it's not over yet. 
there's still a fast we have to do until that of Easter Sunday. One of the traditions that we do during our Lenten season is that of the Stations of the Cross. And I think sometimes that it's kind of sad that's the only time that we focus on the Stations of the Cross is that during the Lenten season. I remember reading a psychologist, and I don't know what his name was, I can't remember, it was senior moments, the winter of my life, um, that in those 14 stations of the cross is every human emotion that has ever felt. Rejection, failure, falling, getting up again, falling again, getting up again, falling again getting up again, grief, my gosh, you name it, it's there. In the Passion of the Christ, there's a very dramatic scene at the end where Jesus is nailed to the cross and when they put the cross up for everyone to see, there's a thud as the cross hits the ground in the hole. Whenever a conqueror conquered a land, what would they do? They would take their flag and they would mark this land as theirs, as their own. That thud is very significant because it marks, it marks this land, this night. Jesus has conquered them all. He has conquered everything. Every human emotion that I will ever feel, every, every doubt, he has even conquered death, our biggest fear. And yet sometimes we forget the way of the cross and what it has brought to each and every one of us. Jesus said in that scripture, especially in that of John, do you realize what I have done for you? Do we realize what God has done for us? Conquered everything every human emotion that I will ever feel. I would suggest maybe that when you have hard times, instead of just waiting to the season of Lent to watch the, walk the Stations of the Cross, we are lucky in this church to have two sets, one etched in glass and the other as small plaques around the church to walk them and pray with them. This evening, well, let me start with this. Several years ago, I did a um, vigil for a young woman who had died from a fentanyl overdose. And at the vigil, one of the individuals got up to talk. And when he did, he said, I baptized her as a Catholic. I'm like, okay, it's fine. And as he was talking, he said, you know, her husband uh, said that she requested the Eucharist. What are we going to do? He said, well, you know, there's some bread and we have some wine for the celebration. We can just get it together here and you know, it's just a symbol. So it doesn't need anything else, but just it's just a symbol. I told him after the service, maybe you ought to come to Mass and see what we really think of that bread and wine, of what it can really do for you. 
Flannery O'Connor, <clears throat> in a discussion, said, if that's all what we do here tonight, this evening, as we celebrate, as Father said, the institution of the Eucharist as well as the priesthood, something very sacred. If that's all that we do here tonight, and each and every time we gather is just a symbol, then I agree with Flannery O'Connor, then the hell with it. Why do we do it? Why is it so important to us? Do you realize what I have done for you, Jesus says? Do you realize that I have conquered every emotion that you ever feel? And I have took it and I hung it upon a cross so that you can see as I was raised up not only in the desert on that seraphith, but as well as for everyone to see. And I will draw everyone, doesn't make any difference who they are. If you remember in our first reading, it didn't make any difference if they took it from the lamb or the goats. It didn't make any difference. I will draw all people to myself. When we come to communion this evening to celebrate the Eucharist, In our first reading, they were told to act as if they were on a journey, to eat with their loins girt as if they were on a flight to go somewhere. They didn't sit down at a table and have wine and bread and lamb. They stood and they ate, and it says that they had to eat all of it not leaving anything left, as if they were on flight. You will come this evening to receive what the church calls the summit of our, of our faith, of our religion, the summit and the source. God himself, the very God who took everything that you will ever suffer and hung it on the cross. You will come standing. You will become, you will come standing in front of the Lord and you will say, you will hear the minister say, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. And you will take it as if you were on a journey, not sitting, but on the move but on the move. If we want things to change in this world, if we want to make a difference, we've got to truly believe in what takes place here this evening. It wasn't instituted by any man, but God himself, God himself. Do this, it's a command. Do this in remembrance of me. Take it and eat. Take it and eat. And wash the feet of others. Spread the good news. Spread the good news. This is supposed to be a joyful night, but it's very solemn. I feel very blessed to be here. And it's kind of sad that this church isn't filled to the brim, but it's here for the faithful. On this night, every Catholic should be in church. Every Catholic. If we are to, the, if we are to receive the summit and the source of what my life and your life and every life that has ever been brought into existence, if this is the summit and the source, it needs to be received. It's sad. It's sad. Tradition. 
part of the tradition we had here at St. Joseph's, and it's kind of sad to me too as well, is that on Good Friday in the evening, used to be at seven o'clock, we would have the Passion Play, where the kids of the confirmation class would reenact those stations of the cross that are so dear to us for the first time in 20 plus years, taking out that year of COVID, as I think most of us have taken that year of COVID out of our lives <laughs> and kind of moved on. For 20 plus years, it's been a tradition here. This year, it's not happening. There's a reason why. We don't have the help. We don't have the kids anymore. Third grade, it's hard for third graders to go through that passion play. But it seems like we've lost a generation somehow, some way. We may blame COVID, who knows? But we've lost a generation. It won't take place tomorrow evening. They are told in the first reading from that book of Exodus that we are to do this each and every time. It's not to be forgotten, it's to be remembered. Our Passover, something that we hold so dear, and yet sometimes it seems to be passing away. I agree with Thomas Merton. Lord, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Maybe you'll show me the way if I put my faith and trust in you and follow you. Are we all willing to do that? Are we all willing to make the sacrifice instead of soccer, basketball, football, whatever it is, band, that keeps this church from being filled Don't know. Where does we go? Where do we go? Hopefully, in our procession as we process to the altar of repose in our community center. Maybe we can make a recommitment to the source and summit. To what is so dear to us that what calls us Catholic. And I don't have to say to anybody, then the hell with what goes on here. This is important to me, and this is important to each and every one of you. This is the only way the world's gonna be saved. The only way. How important.
Let us stand and we offer our prayers. We pray for church leaders. May the Lord continue to conform them evermore to his heart and humble service of, of love for his holy people. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a greater respect for life throughout the world, from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose lives have been ravaged by religious persecution or violence. <clears throat> May the peace of Christ uplift and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. And we, we pray for all of us gathered in this holy place. May the Holy Spirit help us to always be a Eucharistic people who share God's gift of life with the world. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who have died in the light of faith. May the mercy of our loving God usher them into the fullness of eternal life, especially Sue Biskin, Joanna Wolfe, Joe Mott, Pat Phillips, Sherry Reading, Verna Rock, and Felix Trujillo. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Shirley Libra and the repose of the soul of Bob Mooney. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. Last but not least, we offer to you all our priests, priests who die, priests who are still serving, priests who are on the move, priests who are retired, priests who baptize us, priests who gave us First Communion, priests who confirm us, priests who absolve our sins, priests who anointed us when we were sick, priests who marry us, and all the priests that we know, and all the priests that we don't even know, we offer all of them to you for their intention. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, these are the prayers we humbly present in the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ and through the intercession of Our Lady, Queen of Peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For he is a true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as with our end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Sam, our bishop, Jorge, his assistant, and all those who holding to the true hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gather here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Quitsogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damon, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. 
Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of the whole world that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks and praise, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. For, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as one you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be born by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high. In the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sigh of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who do sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, to whom 
You continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your pastor, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, again, thank you so much for joining us uh, for the Mass of the Lord's Supper tonight. I hope to see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. for the veneration of the cross, commemorating the death of Jesus for our sins. So today's Mass will not be ended with the blessing from the priest, but it will be ended with the transfer of the Holy Eucharist. We will have Jesus repose in the side chapel in the Paris Hall here, and it will be there. Oh, the doors will be unlocked until midnight. This is the night uh, we commemorate the time Jesus spent in Gethsemane to pray for his preparation of the passion and the death on the cross uh, on Calvary. So I really um, ask you to keep this moment from now until Easter Vigil as a moment of solitude and prayerful as much as possible. It would be a temptation we could fall into socializing, but it should not be so. It should be the time that we want to spend time with Jesus tonight, if you can, um, as the disciples were with him in Gethsemane, uh, as he prayed with sweat and blood in the garden. So please um, make some time to visit Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament in the Paris Hall, and then we'll see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. for the veneration of the cross. Please kneel. 